Hey guys, my name is Joe Hello, and we are here at the Roxy in Atlanta. We're wrapping up this tour. We have two shows left. Yes, two shows. Oh my God, I'm so excited that this is over, but it's been a journey. I wanted to take you guys through something that I see in this industry with using the Digico consoles on latency, especially when incorporating waves into this beautiful desk and utilizing waves. We have to think of the latency that's happening when we're sending from input channels to groups and groups to another source such as waves or inputs to waves because every time we send something to a group, there's a set amount of samples that get placed on the track and that pushes things back as you know how delay compensation works. These consoles are fabulous at compensating, but if you incorporate another setup like waves, you could run into problems. So let's walk through these steps that I take and we make sure that everything's latency free connected or in perfect phase. On these desks, they're very well laid out. We're using 96K for our sample rate and that helps on latency. So when you use 48K, it actually creates more latency. And how sample rate works is we hear from 20 to 22K. A guy named Nyquist, I believe, said we should record in digital at least double. That's where 44.1 came into the standard. We doubled that again, 96K. So we're actually capturing more information and that's allowing us to hear the sine wave at full quality, you know, almost like analog. Analog is round, where digital are steps, guessing what that sine wave is. Sample rates are left to right, guessing steps, if you will, and bit rate is the in-between steps of building that sine wave. That's a quick overview on sample rate. The most important thing when routing these desks to a group is making sure that every input is routed to a group. That's the easiest way to compensate your latency. So if I have 20 channels, I'm going to group them. Drums, you can do snare by itself, toms by themselves, however your workflow allots you to mix well, but making sure that every input that is gonna go out the master is going to a group, if you utilize groups, which you should. It's another level of control. I definitely utilize this desk in its full capability, but you can also keep it simple. Once everything is going to a labeled group, then those groups are gonna go into the master and you would most likely create matrices of your left, right, sub, front fill, out fill, what have you. That's kind of it in a very simple way when routing this desk. I just hit the channel that I want to route, our outputs, where do we want it to go? Stereo or mono, and we can go right to the master, but I would suggest creating subgroups pre-going to the master um, for that secondary level of control. So real simple, and everything can be built offline on the beautiful editing software that they have, and you show up and you're ready to rock. Now let's take a look at how we route in waves. So similar to sending um, to our groups, we have these inserts. So when I select insert A, I'm going to send it to waves and go send and return so that it goes in and out and pick a waves channel. All of this is connected. You can check tutorials on how to connect waves. So. An important thing in this world is when we send it to one and two over here, we then have created our session. Everything's already set up for us. When I want to take input one and two from waves, if it is a channel input, then I'm going to have a, a latency setting for the channels inputs. So that's just right up here. Latency group one. That just ties everything that's on latency group one together. So if there's 128 samples, everything that's on latency group one will be pushed back and aligned. The problem with that is if you don't send all of your inputs 
to waves, then you're going to run into problems because this is what's compensating our latency right now. I hear it in a lot of delays, reverbs, things that can like shift certain frequencies and it's not together with the room like this. We want to watch how much latency we're putting on waves because that'll definitely affect our hearing. In regards to the master, because we, we're sending um, these matrix outs and we're putting an insert on, the, on these matrices for our master, whether it be subs or um, our main PA, they don't require us to pull them back. Unless you're gonna get crazy with your processing, if there's zero latency that, on your master of what you're doing, they don't need to be grouped because it's just gonna add more delay for no reason. So the master is the master, right? And that makes sense. A lot of people do too much on trying to compensate and then it becomes, you're pushing the PA way too far back and you can audibly hear the difference. And what confuses the artist, if they're hearing the slap back and it's already delayed, it's gonna push them off their cadence. I noticed that on a few tours that I've been on, this one we cleaned up the edges to make sure that doesn't happen. But that's it in a nutshell. Um, making sure you're utilizing your latency compensation in waves and you're sending everything there. So even if you have 12 inputs that aren't, they don't have any plugins on it, send them there so that they're compensated and they're coming out together. In regards to uh, what I was talking about with delay compensation, a very important thing that we discussed was our input channels. If we're going to use groups, by selecting this button here, this is going to rust. The playback should also go to a group, which it is. And that amount of samples, so the background vocals and the main artist are gonna stay in line. Now incorporating waves, which by hitting this insert button, clicking on the A insert and selecting the rack, and then making sure that we engage um, this insert, insert. Um, that is now going to dive us into waves and we're gonna to have to compensate the latency that we put on there. So if playback is coming here, we're gonna select group one and also for the main vocals that's coming here. So group one. So that way this 128 samples is on both the channels that are coming in. No matter how many plugins you put on there, they will stay connected and have those samples pulled back. It's important to understand this type of routing because if you send only two things to waves and you have eight more things that aren't being compensated, those things will be out of phase. We don't really hear 128 samples, but we it does take the tightness on the phase side away. So when the background and instruments are playing, it's lined up with the vocal and any live instruments that are playing are lined up with the tracks and they're not flamming. Um, so that's a very important thing that I see a lot of people misusing. Um, so I wanted to just do this video to help um, clear that up. And again, I'm Joe Hello. I'm here to help. DM me, message me, I'll answer. And let's have a nice clean sound. <laughs>